VC, but that was All really right, great. Should we move on to Argentina, Barbarians? You yeah. had enough of that, have we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just well, cut, cut me off, mate, whenever you do. <laughs> well, I- Hi guys and welcome to this week's episode of the third half on the new YouTube channel, Rugby Revolution. My name's Matt. I'm Emma. I'm Jamie. We're going to be taking you all around the rugby world and back. First we'll look at the performance of the England teams in the European Rugby Championship. Then we'll take a look at the Barbarians who played Argentina over the weekend. And then we're going to touch on a few issues potentially involving Sam Burgess and Eddie Jones. First, we have to start with the European Rugby Champions Cup. There it is. And we have to talk about Wasps, of course. I mean, no other team has put themselves on the map in the first fortnight than them. Yeah, back to the glory days. Playing well. Yeah, I mean, what is it? They put 60 points on Leinster and Toulon, the last two champions of the previously Heineken Cup. That's incredible. I mean, I don't think even their most one eyed of fans would have. Seen that coming. Toulon are French, aren't they? So, <laughs> away from home, uh, it was an incredible performance to beat them with a bonus point like that, but they are a French team away from home. So, And the thing I guess you have to think about is the tournament's not won in the first fortnight. God, no. Well, they're, well, they're home and away to Bath over the next couple of weeks, and both of those are very losable. Bath, not to put down on it, but um, yeah, Bath, very good team. They've still got to go away to Toulon. Leinster might bounce back later in the season, you never know. And if you look at the start of the domestic season, they've lost to Leicester and Quinns as well in the league already. So they've, it's been a very good start for them in Europe, but I don't think any of them will be getting too carried away. Um, I, yeah, incredible, incredible performances, but don't, like, too long. We're, I'm starting to feel like we discussed, I think it was two weeks ago now, the, the fact that they are, they're cash bought players. They are incredible players, but they are there because of the money. They're not there because they love the team. And Wasp players, they love Wasps. And they, it's part of, part of them, it's part of their kind of, they are one. Um, and the same goes for Saracens, who have also been playing very well. Yeah, true. Um, and I think it's kind of showing by their, their performance this weekend. Well, before we head on to the other English teams, we've got a, a YouTube comment from James. Thanks for your comment, James. Do you think Wasps can win the Champions Cup after doing Leinster and Toulon yes. in second games? Definitely. They can win it. Yeah, 100%. I, like I said, I don't think they'll be getting carried away, but they've shown enough of how they can play and how good they can be and some of the class they've got throughout that team. Look at the back row with Haskell, George Smith, who's still playing like a 21 year old somehow despite the fact he must be about 70 by now, <laughs> um, and Nathan Hughes. Yeah, th- there's just, they've got enough quality throughout the team. To, and any side that puts, what was it, 40, 30 odd points past Toulon, they've got to be amongst the contenders, definitely. Who else can win in Europe? We've, we've put Wasps out there, yes they can. Who else? I, I'm behind Sar- Saracens, I think oh, Saracens yeah. have a good, I think they have a really good showing. probably unfairly talked about Wasps and not mentioned Saracens enough yet. That win away at Ulster, that, that's arguably more impressive than yeah. The Wasps win, just because it's Ravenhill on a Friday night mm. in the pissing rain, <laughs> and somehow they've scored four tries and got the bonus point win. Incredible. Yeah. And did anyone see uh, that bloke in the number 10 shirt for Saracens? Because I'm certain it wasn't Owen Farrell. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely did not play like the Owen Farrell that I know, and the Owen Farrell that most England fans know. Now moving on to the rest of the England teams, I mean, You'd be hard pressed going to any rugby site and finding nothing mentioned about Manu Tuilangi and how much money mm-hmm. he's apparently demanding. And got, got there, the there, there's, the there's the tweet we've got here from Dan Anscombe. Thanks oh. for your tweet, Dan. Oh, Is Manu worth the sum being banded about by Wasps Worcester? Should he repay Leicester for time he spent on the sideline? Uh, no. 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 That's, <laughs> he's not. He's definitely not worth that I money. don't think he's worth the, the, the amount of money that's been bandied about is mental. It's It'll be what, behind only behind Dan Carter? In terms what's of this based on? Life? That's well, what it, I want to know. I what was is reading this? today, what the stats he's played about 20 odd games in the past three or four seasons for Leicester. 
Well, I think it's, it's near like 12, on, isn't it, for two and a half seasons? Yeah. On his, on his day, if he's fit on his day and firing, yes, he's completely unstoppable and he is a one of a kind talent in the world. But he's, he is rapidly falling into that bracket. I like to call it the Tom Croft bracket <laughs> of players that are previously world class, but they just keep getting injured and injured. And they come to what should be the peak of their careers, but it's not because these injuries have taken their toll and they've not been playing enough rugby. He got in trouble for doing bunny ears. He got in trouble for bl- being up to police officers. He he keeps getting in trouble. And Leicester have been there. Leicester have helped him. Mm. They've given him the support when a lot of clubs would have say. Right, a club of, be good for him, they for have, him especially because his whole family have been through it. It's like he. To be honest, I know it's a lot of talk about Worcester want to pay all this money, and if they have that money and they want to bring them in, fair enough. But. Would Worcester turn around to him after he does his next episode of, hopefully he won't, but if he does, which the odds are he probably will, like, are they going to yeah, be, a, we'll stick by you? It's a ridiculous gamble, so. isn't it? That much money for someone so injury prone. Val Molina. And then comes Sanchez. Now there's a chance for Cordero. Cordero. Across comes Naholo. On to Machano. This is spectacular stuff. From the Pumas, end to end. Right, so the European Shit. Cup was not the only rugby going on at the weekend. Um, Argentina played Barbarians at Twickenham in a typically entertaining Barbarians game. I can't remember the score, but it was a lot to a lot. A lot, yeah. um, Argentina won, though. Uh, another very good performance from them. And we had a tweet from Sucker for Red. Thanks for your tweet, Sucker for Red. Great Twitter name as well. Um, <laughs> If the Argentinian team versus Barbars really is the Super Rugby team for 2016, what hope for the rest of us? Question. The Argentina squad essentially playing domestic rugby in Super Rugby next season. Go, you're a Kiwi. What's your thoughts? <laughs> well, it's going to become a wrangle between Argentina and the European sides. Look at already the guys that have come over, signed up for Super Rugby, Agustin Creevy. Nicholas well, Sanchez. Yeah, no, exactly. But they're all from about five. But they've all signed up. But they're all coming from European clubs. Yeah. And so it's going to be. Um, I'm not sure exactly if they are all there. I know quite a few. Fernando Lobe. He's There's only there. a few that aren't. There are a few of the big names granted, mm-hmm. but they're in the kind of the twilight of the careers as well. Mm-hmm. A year to Fernandez Lobe. But like you say, they've got Sanchez. They've got Hernandez. Mm-hmm. They've got. Senatore, they've got Captain Creevy. I don't think they'll be that great at super, at super Rugby, to be honest, because to play that kind of to play that kind of rugby week in week out, it takes it really takes its toll, and I'm not sure they're quite. You know, you condition you condition teams for this. I'm not sure they'll be quite up to it in the first maybe the first year, first two years, the same <coughs> lag that Argentina had in the rugby championship. I think it's going to be an interesting transition because they're going from a group of guys who are an international team that come together maybe three or four times a year to play a few tests and train together. Now they're going to be together for a whole, the whole of whatever the four months of Super Rugby. Long term, that's obviously going to benefit them massively, and I genuinely think in 2019 they're going to be mm, one of the favourites. Yeah, I, I agree. But for this season, like being, being together that often, that's going to change the dynamic a bit like within the squad. And there's probably going to be a few, you know, clashes of personalities that might come out a little bit more, stuff like that to work through. Um, so other news this week, Burgess. So he gets to go back to the Rabbitohs and then he's told by the NRL that they can't afford him unless they release quite a few players. <laughs> I mean, it's hard, it's hard <laughs> oh, not to laugh, it's 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 fun, it's isn't it? No, we shouldn't laugh. That's not really fair. It's okay. karma. It's absolutely fair. Oh, it's karma. You've got again though, I mean, I lovely bloke, I'm sure, but he is just causing carnage. Mm. And he's causing other guys to <laughs> these whoever they're gonna have to bin from the Rabbitohs NRL squad, you've got to feel for them. I don't know whether Luther Brown's been on the blow to me being like, Do you want to set up a club or something? Oh, yeah, what's that about as well? Yeah, like, I mean, so, there are so many it's just even carnage, people's careers in his wake, like the, the fact that he, they can't register him is because of his salary, isn't it? And salary cap. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. So Take a pay cut and come back. I don't know whether it. it's his agent saying to him, no, this is how much money you're getting and we're going to stick to it. But if you were him, wouldn't you be a bit like, 
oh, I don't really want to f- these guys over. Let's try and yeah. maybe take a little pay cut for a little while. At least while their contracts run out or something. Yeah. Especially as that, that, that fan base is so about that club. Everyone yeah. loves the yeah. club. First for him to come back and say, yeah, I'm back. I'm playing with my brothers, but you're going to have to get rid of some other people that aren't my brothers. <laughs> what goes around comes around though, isn't it? Can you imagine if they cut a league. brother? <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that might be breaking point. And he'd be like, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, the man's come, pretty come much, on, you can demand what he can demand pretty much what he likes. Yeah. He just gives has to, to give Russell a hug, really, doesn't he? <laughs> mm. The next point of discussion, Eddie Jones, what will he do first? Eddie he's going to break the house down. That's the well, metaphor. He's going to have a sit down chat with Rob Shaw and see what he wants and, and what he Tell him he's sees. not good enough. <laughs> I think the first thing he'll, he'll do is figure out his coaches and figure out who he's going to have around him. I mean, if you think Hopefully about it, Borthwick. it's a masterclass. Hopefully not Andy Farrell. It's a masterclass from the RFU because they've set up Borthwick. Maybe a little long-term thinking, but Borthwick is going to be in control of England 2023. Do you reckon? Yeah, absolutely. And that, that would have probably been a pulling point for Eddie Jones. They can, they can establish this 10-year kind of... Period. That yeah, ex- well, exactly. England love a plan. All right, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed the show, then please comment below with any questions that you want us to discuss next week. Uh, also, tweet us at the Rugby Revolt. And if you've had as much fun as we have, then please click on the Rugby Ball here to subscribe to the channel. And we will see you next week. See ya. See you guys. Bye. Thanks for your tweet, Lee. F***ed off, dude. I heard that little snigger and I didn't want to look. <laughs>